Good evening, I'm Kimilia and this is Kili News. If you're Zahid Hamidi, you're probably excited GE15 is happening soon. If you're Anwar Ibrahim, you're most likely scrambling to finalize Harapan's GE15 strategy. But what about Najib Abdul Razak? His lawyer wants to know if Najib, who some call Bosco, would make an appearance in the GE15 campaign trail. Najib Abdul Razak Lead Defense Counsel Muhammad Shafi Abdullah is looking to answer one question. Can his client, who is in jail, stand as a candidate in GE15? Shafi raised this question during case management of Najib's legal action to be allowed to attend parliament, during the matter initially fixed for hearing before the Kuala Lumpur High Court this morning, Senior Federal Counsel M. Kogi Lambigai applied for it to be adjourned to another date. The legal representative for the three respondents, government, home minister and prison department commissioner general, informed that they needed time to peruse the written submissions filed by the former prime minister's legal team. Kogi Lambigai said this is so that the respondents can prepare their own written submissions in response to the contentions by the incumbent Pekan MP. She added that there is no sense of urgency anymore as parliament was dissolved two days ago. At this juncture, Shafi informed the court that the hearing should be rescheduled to Friday as there are several serious legal issues that needed to be determined. Shafi said among them are whether Najib could be nominated again to contest the upcoming election. Shafi argued that Najib has the right to attend parliament. However, reports said that parliament has been dissolved. The issue raised then is whether Najib could be present at the place of nomination and be nominated. He added that therefore, the legal action needs to be heard as soon as possible due to the core issue linked to Article 48 of the Federal Constitution. Judge Ahmad Kamal Muhammad Shahid rescheduled the hearing for next Wednesday. Ismail Sabri has blamed PN for his decision to seek Parliament's dissolution. However, not everyone seems to be able to accept the AMNO leader's excuse, especially Muhyiddin Yassin. Perikatan National Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin said caretaker Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob was irresponsible for blaming the dissolution of parliament on the 12 ministers from PN. According to Free Malaysia Today, Muhyiddin said that Ismail Sabri made the accusation because AMNO and BN was being criticised by the public for calling for an election during the monsoon season. Muhyiddin said this in response to Ismail Sabri blaming PN ministers for the dissolution of parliament after they wrote a letter to the young Dibartuan Agong to record their objections to the 15th general election being held this year. Ismail Sabri had said that the action had undermined the prime minister's institution and the solidarity among members of the federal administration. However, according to Muhyiddin, PN had an agreement with Ismail Sabri when the latter was forming his government in August last year that a dissolution of parliament should be discussed with PN first. He said the 12 ministers from the coalition also had the right to write the Agong as there had been no in-depth discussion or cabinet decision on the dissolution of parliament. He added that Ismail cannot blame anyone and must bear the brunt of such attacks from the public. Meanwhile, Zahid took it one step further, saying Ismail Sabri could have sacked all PN ministers for the letter. However, this would have caused bigger problems. AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said the letter by 12 Perikata National Ministers to the Young Dipartuan Agong was the main reason that led to Parliament being dissolved. In a post on Facebook today, he described their actions as a malicious attempt by Barisan National's enemies to humiliate the Prime Minister from BN. He said this in response to Perikatan National Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin's statement on the matter. Zahid pointed out that the PN ministers could have brought their objections to cabinet but instead chose to publicize it to the public. He said this had led to erosion of solidarity in the government and led to the king's unhappiness with the political developments in the country. Zahid added that Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob could have fired all 12 ministers, but this would have brought a bigger, more severe crisis and would also cause a vote of no confidence. With this, he said the best way to deal with these undisciplined cabinet members was for the PM to ask for His Majesty's consent to dissolve parliament and added that this would mean the mandate is returned to the people. Zaid also highlighted that there had been three prime ministers in less than five years due to political instability. 
He said hopefully this political tragedy will not repeat itself and God willing, when BN gets a bigger mandate and returns to lead the government, this will not happen. However, for PN, that letter was nothing out of the ordinary and Hamza said even Ismail Sabri would have done something similar if required to do so by his party. Hamza Zainuddin has defended Perikatan National's move to send a letter to the young Dipertuan Agong to object to GE15 being held this year. The PN Secretary General said it was a normal practice for the party representatives to send a letter to anyone. Just like what uh, the Prime Minister answered earlier, in fact, the Prime Minister uh, answered the same thing, the same questions, and he's raised and he said that it is normal, quite okay. And after a few days, he came up with another statement to say it is not normal. I think something is wrong. Hamza also said he understood why caretaker Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob had to take the PN ministers to task for the letter. And I know, saya faham keadaan ini boleh berlaku sebab kita dah bincang dalam uh, dalam kabinet uh, bahawa ada kadang-kadang kita terpaksa uh, memikirkan tanggungjawab kita sebagai uh, mewakili parti-parti yang tertentu. Because I think uh, uh, we have no other choice. Uh, sama juga uh, bila kedudukan yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri, uh, it's got no other choice if the party uh, ask him to do something which maybe he has to uh, not only listen, but I think, to do it accordingly. Yesterday, Ismail Sabri said the act of penning a letter to the ruler had undermined the prime minister's institution and the solidarity among members of the federal administration. The prime minister's latest remarks were contrary to what he said two days ago, where he regarded the minister's letter to the king as irrelevant to the legitimacy of the government. Meanwhile, PAS is still looking for a running mate for GE15 and has advised its leaders and members not to make the search more difficult. PAS leaders, members and supporters have been advised to avoid putting up posts and articles on social media that could cause hatred and slander to their political rivals. In a statement last night, PAS Secretary General Takiyuddin Hassan said that as a political party that is based on Islam, the party's leaders, members and supporters are required to maintain their conduct and decency as thought by the religion. Takiyuddin reminded them that the party's constitution stipulates all PAS members should always guard their morality and control themselves from doing anything that could harm the party's interests. He added that such an offense is punishable with disciplinary action by the party. Takiyuddin also reiterated that efforts to unite the Ummah would be easier to achieve when all the Malay Muslim and Bumiputra parties come together to face GE15 with the larger picture of the country's stability and the people's well-being in mind. He said PAS believes that the concept of political domination by a majority group in a country is not something racist and unfair, but a naturally accepted norm in any country. While all this is happening, a DAP lawmaker has gone to court in hopes of stopping the election from being held this year. Incumbent Klang MP Charles Santiago is seeking a court order to stop the 15th general election from being held this year. Charles filed the originating summons at the Kuala Lumpur High Court yesterday. He cited the rainy season and the ensuing flood risk as a reason to stop the election. He named caretaker Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob, the government, and the election commission as respondents. Charles is seeking a declaration that Ismail Sabri's request to the young Dipertuan Agong to dissolve parliament was in contravention of Articles 40, Bracket 1, and Bracket 1A of the federal constitution. He said this was as the request was not made on the advice of the cabinet and is, therefore, null and void. He also sought a declaration that the dissolution of parliament was not in accordance with Article 55, Bracket 2, and Article 40, Bracket 1, and Bracket 1A of the federal constitution and an order to stop the EC from taking any steps to conduct the election. In addition, Charles is also seeking costs and other orders deemed fit by the court. In a statement later, Charles said he had to resort to legal action since his repeated letters to the EC for flood mitigation plans have gone unheeded. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. 
If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.